Hi, today I'm going to go quickly over a very simple sketch in processing that um, animates a fish um, inside an aquarium. So, um, in order to do that, what I've simply done is taken a, a picture of um, an image of an aquarium that is used as a background, and we're going to see how to do that in processing. And then I found a, an animated um, GIF of a file, of a fish, and I've uh, broken it into different frames. It actually contains eight different frames for the animation and um, recorded them as separate images in processing and then the sketch automatically um, goes through each um, frame and moves it slightly to the, um, to the right as, um, as the draw function is called and we get this nice little animation that you can see here. So um, I've written a, a page that explains all this. So we're going to take a look at, um, at it right now. Um, and the URL will be um, available um, in the documentation for this video. Um, so here is the um, page um, with a little YouTube movie showing you how that works. And uh, we're going to go through all the, um, the, the different phases there. So first, you have to find um, an image of using this one, you can find plenty of different images on the web. Pick one that um, that looks good. This image is going to be redrawn every time the draw function is called, so you don't want it to be too, too large, otherwise you, your uh, program, your processing code is going to spend a lot of time uh, redrawing it, so your animation may be a little slow. So don't take something too big. And then find a, um, a fish, uh, animated, so look, so the keyword would be animated GIF, Fish and uh, search on um, with your favorite um, browser. Um, search on the web. I found this particular fish, which has a transparent background. So that's an important um, uh, property that you want of the GIF is you want the image around the fish itself to be transparent, so that when it's going to be drawn on top of the aquarium, you won't see this square around the fish, but you'll just see the fish itself. So that's the um, animated uh, GIF file that I found, and it contains eight um, different frames. Um, and you see one frame, the eyes are closed, and then some frames, the mouth is open, and definitely the tail, the tail moves. So um, the first thing to do is to put the, um, all this information in a data directory. So what you want to do, um, this is the um, Aquarium Zero, I've called this particular uh, sketch Aquarium Zero. This is the directory of the folder where it's located. I'm using a Mac, but it will look very similar on a Windows machine. Uh, Aquarium Zero PD is the file containing the code, the processing code. Then you have to create a data directory inside um, that. And um, so what you will um, see if you look inside Aquarium Zero, the Aquarium Zero folder, is that Aquarium Zero PD, then the data directory, and inside, um, don't worry about all this. What, what is important right now is this fish. The animated GIF is right here, and uh, the Mac is nice in showing us what, what that looks like. Um, these other files will we'll create a little later on. I'll show you these are the different frames, but usually you don't, you don't get them directly. The, 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 the GIF file contains all the frames, and that's where you get the animation from. Unfortunately, processing cannot animate this. We have to do it ourselves. So that's why we'll need the eight separate frames and, and kind of display them ourselves one after the other. All right. So uh, let's go back here. And the first thing to do is once you have the aquarium and, and the, the fish, you put them together in a very simple sketch. So let's take this uh, sketch right here. Um, let me comment all this out. This is the final sketch. Um, and this code is available on the page here, so I have the final code, so don't worry about trying to replicate it. You'll have access to that. Um, so let's take a look. I have um, P images, so one for the tank or image, and one for the, the fish. Um, in the setup, I'm going to set the size of the window to be 1000 by 600, make animation smooth, um, and then you, it's recommended that you load the images first in setup. So um, I have uh, an image now, I've loaded the image from the uh, directory, from the data directory, it's going to look there automatically, that's my aquarium background, 
and then fish is going to be a representation of my gif, right? And in draw, what I'm going to do is simply redraw them over and over and over again. Um, it's not going to be terribly uh, exciting, but uh, I'll just do that just to verify that everything is there. Okay, so you see that processing actually is not animating this fish. It's just still, and it's showing probably frame zero, the first frame of the fish, and the others are not visible. So processing doesn't have, I think there's a library that allows you to do that, but doesn't seem to be very robust. But as computer scientists, we can uh, figure out ways around that. Um, so that's good, that works. I have my fish and I have my background. Now all I need to do is to take this image and break it down into frames. So fortunately, um, there are um, uh, services on the web that will do that for you freely. And one that I found, it's not the only one, it's called easygif.com. And here is its interface. And uh, it asks you to pick a file and let's do that very quickly. Aquarium zero data. So fish is right here. That's the file I want. Okay, I'm uploading it. It has found it. And now I can split it into frames. It takes a little while, and that's it. It has found one, two, three, eight different frames. And you see that in each one the fish is slightly different. So here the tail is is, is uh, bent quite a bit, uh, here less, here less so, the eyes are closed, the, the tail is fully um, fully flat for us, and then it starts bending some more, and so that's by going repeatedly through these eight frames over and over, the gift gives us the impression that the face is actually moving. So what you need to do then is I would control click on each one and save image as and I'm going to save them as fish zero, fish one, all the way up to fish seven. That I get. Um, so, which is what I've done. I'm not going to do it here. We can quit this. And these are the different frames. You see, fish zero here is the first frame, second frame, and so on. I have all these different frames. Now save, and I'm, I've put them in the data directory of my sketch. So now I'm ready to use these and animate that. So let's go back to the, um, the page here, the tutorial. Um, so what I'm going to have to do, let's take a look at this a little better. What I'm going to have to do is now, instead of lo loading one image for the fishes, I'm going to have eight images. So in processing, if you have a collection of things, it's a good idea to put them in an array. So that's what I'm declaring here, P image bracket bracket. I'm declaring an array of P images. Um, I'm going to call it fish and um, I'm making it a new array of eight images. So that's a declaration, that's the, the type, it's going to be an array of P images and here is the actual array and I know ahead of time that it's eight so I'm just going to use eight here. So now fish is an array and in each one of these elements of these eight cells that it contains I'm going to have to load an image one of the frames from the data directory. So that's what I'm doing here. Fish zero in the first cell of the array. I'm going to load fish zero that gets my first frame. That's really kind of the only thing that is new here in the setup. So the, and you have to load all the images in the setup. And then in draw, I'm going to use a trick. And you see here that I have two calls. To, I'm displaying two images. So the first one is the background. That's the background of the aquarium. And the second image here, I'm just um, I'm taking one frame from, from fish, so one cell of fish, and I want it to be different every time. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use frame count. Frame count is a counter that is incremented automatically by processing every time the draw function is called. So if I'm using frame count mod 8, then fr whatever frame count is, if I take the modulo by 8, I'm taking the remainder of the division by 8, so it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this quantity here will constantly vary between 0 and 7 and then repeat 0 to 7, 0 to 7, 0 to 7. So this way I can pick one cell of the array fish every time I, the, the draw function is called and display that at 200, 200. So that's the location that I'm going to have on the screen. So let's take this very quickly. 
and copy that into our sketch. All right, so here it is. Let's run it. All right, so now I have my little fish animated. It's animated quite fast, so um, the next thing to do is probably slow it down a little bit. So one simple way of doing that, and it's explained here, is to change the frame rate. So at the end of setup, when you're done with all this, frame rate is an uppercase R. I'm going to set it to 10 and set 15. So let's run this. A little slower, nicer, um, less frantic uh, fish. So that's good for us. Now we need to make the fish move. So um, in order to do that, I'm going to have to change this 200, 200, at least that part. The first 200, which is the x, the horizontal location of the fish. So I need I need a counter. I need some variable, and it needs to be defined outside draw because every time draw starts over, I want that to still exist. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to create a variable, an integer called um, fish x, and I'm going to set it at say 100 to start. And then when I'm just displaying the image of the fish, I'm going to say put it at fish x on the x-axis, horizontal axis, and then fish x equals fish x plus, I don't know, maybe 5, 10, some displacement, some number of pixels. And let's see how that changes our sketch. All right, so our fish is moving. This is great. And 5 seems to be a good, a good displacement. 5 pixels every time it's drawn, a new frame is drawn. And uh, it's a little um, um, jagged. But it, it looks, uh, looks it looks good. Unfortunately, when it goes all the way off to the right, it doesn't come back, so I have to fix that. And so, um, fish X, if it's too big, if it's greater than the, the width of the um, of, of my sketch, then I should bring fish X to a small number. So if fish X is greater than the width, and width is a um, variable that is pretty clear, you don't have to declare it. Then um, fish x equals, we can start kind of on the left of the screen. So minus 200, for example, might be a good number. Processing doesn't care if you try to draw something off the screen. So let's see if that works. I'm going to have to wait for the fish to get to the right. Actually, actually just for debugging, I should set the frame rate higher. Um, so that I don't have to wait so long for things to happen. Um, all right, let's see, it's going off, going off, and it's reappearing, it's quite quite good. So it's, it's working quite nicely, one thing that we can do. So what I've done in, in this particular tutorial here is uh, talk about several enhancements that you can um, you could think of um, doing that, that might, be, uh, might be nice. And actually one of them I've implemented. So uh, if you want to have several fish, It'd be nice to use a class in object-oriented programming, so your fish become object. So I've done that. Um, it's available right here. If you click here, you can go there temporarily. Uh, open a new tab. So I have part two where um, now I've used a class to um, define my fish, and I can have as many fish as, well, as I want. Here's an example with ten. So this page will show you how to do that. You need um, you need a class. So I have a class fish here um, that requires a little bit more um, understanding of programming and object-oriented programming. So some interesting concepts. But if you already know that, you should be able to look at this class and figure out what it does and how my now new aquarium um, can use a school of fish. So here in this case, I have. 10 fish, but I could have 20. Whatever number, you just change that, and then you change the number of fish. It's very, very nice. All right, so this is it for um, this sketch um, and this little tutorial. Good luck. I hope you, uh, you enjoy processing and, and doing some uh, cool animation.